guys, as most of you will know, I am currently studying computer game arts at university. However, I am almost finished with my degree. I'm in third year and I'm currently at home for Christmas break and it's dawning on me that I only have about six months left. It's a little bit scary, but I figured I would share my experience with you so far and then give you a proper video on how I found university and everything after I have completed my degree. Hopefully got myself a good one, but we shall see. Um, so yeah, today is going to be a very chilled out Q&A about my university experience because whenever I tell people that I study computer game arts, they're always pretty interested because it is a pretty interesting subject, especially with my university because it's very all-rounded and I know a lot of degrees aren't like that. There's good and bad points to it, but basically in my course of computer game arts, we not only learn how to make game art, so concept art, using Photoshop and things like that, we also learn how to 3D model that concept art, how to texture it, uh, a little bit about rigging, nothing really about animation but we get to do that in our own time, and um, coding and putting it all together in Unity as well. So basically it's a course that teaches you how to be an indie game developer, which sounds pretty awesome, right? Sounds pretty overwhelming, yes, but it is, in my opinion, totally worth it for reasons that might be a little bit controversial but we'll talk about it today through my responses to your questions so basically i just asked you guys a bunch of questions no no i didn't no i didn't i asked you guys for your questions on twitter and i asked you lovely patreons on discord chat so let's start with you patreons michael castilla asked when does uk university start and when did you start developing games with tabany and tiffana what? <laughs> Basically, I have a game dev team in uni, which are the girls that I do all the game dev stuff with, and they're called Tiffany and Tabitha, not Tabany and Tiffitha. What is that? <laughs> but they are awesome, awesome girls, and I've made the past three games with them. UK university starts in September. Most courses do, not all, but most of them do. So that's when I started in September of 2016. 15? 15, 16. Ah, 2015, that's so long ago now. Oh, it's so scary, don't make me think about these things. And I didn't actually meet Tabitha and Tiffany until the beginning of second year and I'm so glad that I did because I think first year is where you're kind of getting to know yourself, getting to know who you work well with, who you don't work well with, what you might want to do with your career, you know, in the second and third years, what you want to kind of focus more on. Um, and yeah, I'm so lucky that I met them because I was basically a loner in second year and then they found me and they were like, hey, we need a partner to make this next game with. Do you want to come with us? And I was like, yes, 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 please, please be my friends. And then ever since then, we've worked so well together because they adore the modeling aspect of things and I adore the coding and the concepting. So it is a great little trio pairing that we've got going on. <laughs> And actually, I said I was going to do Patreons first, but there's a question on Twitter that relates to that question very well. Very sorry if I bitch your name, but it's Mugiwara745, Hero of Time, that's your little handle, and you said you're developing a game, but with three friends, so is that difficult? Yes. Hell yes. Especially because... The last couple of games that we've made, we've only had three months to make the game in. So it has been a lot of late nights, working through weekends, just working non-stop. But I don't know, if, if I'm doing something that I'm passionate about, I don't mind. I will happily stay up all night. I will happily work through weekends. I'll happily spend all my time on it because it's something that I really want to see happen. For instance, our sleep paralysis game, plug, 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 you can buy it on the Play Store, it's only 70p, what? Um, that was made in three months and it's all about sleep paralysis, helping people to understand what it's like to have it and what 
it's all about and I'm really proud of that. I think I think us as a team worked super well to get that game developed in three months and I'm so excited to see it out on the Play Store and it was actually my lecturer who said he felt it was up to standard to be on the Play Store. So yeah, big ego boost, it was great, but of course yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult. So the lecturers kind of say that you should have at least a game designer, concept artist, character artist, environment artist, and sometimes if you need it, a GUI artist. So we have three people. Three, three, three people. So usually we just all share the concept art. I'm the game designer, Tabitha's the character artist, and Tiffany is the environment artist. If you'd like to see more on that in detail, go check out my second channel, which is more about the game development stuff that I'm doing in university. Talks about the game that we're working on now, talks about it all in detail, plugs everywhere today. Let's move on to the next question. <laughs> hey, that kind of rhymed because I said it stupidly. Back to the Patreon. So that's my niece downstairs. So Ib196 asks, what is the biggest obstacle that you've faced while developing a game with your teammates? Such a good question. Ooh, man. I think the biggest one for us was probably animation, but just because we don't actually get taught how to animate. And that also answers Laudiot's question, which was, what do they teach in animation? Um, yeah, they don't actually really teach you animation. You kind of get one lesson on how to rig not enough. Rigging is difficult. I don't understand. But I mean, there is a whole animation subject in university. So if you want to be doing that, you probably should have gone to study animation instead. So yeah, that was pretty hard. And also just, you know, personal life gets in the way sometimes and you need to kind of put the project to one side and remember to be friends as well. I think that that's one thing, especially in the third year, I'm realizing I just want to spend time with my teammates as friends, as well as as work partners, because they're lovely people as well as hard workers and I want to appreciate them for that. Okay, I'm really sorry if I butcher your name as well, but Shosu Montekinos, your handle is JCM Base. Basically you're saying that you're trying to develop a game with your friends and they're more creative and you're a coder. Can I give you advice on how to be more creative with your approach? or you, you use the word artistic actually, artistic with your approach. Hmm, it's very interesting because I, he I hear this quite a bit, you know, that, that coding is not creative or that coders aren't creative people and forever that has just mind boggled me because before I even went to uni I was a front end developer, I was still coding but I still felt that I was, I was a creative person and I think that coders are creative because if you give them a problem to do or you want you want some sort of functionality to happen right there are so many different ways to code that to make it happen so you need to think of like the most the most efficient way maybe even tweak it along the way you can make some cool stuff happen i think that's how most of the really awesome game mechanics happen i have an idea in my head of what kind of game mechanic i want and then as i'm coding it i realize that maybe i could incorporate something else into it or maybe i could make some particles instantiate as this happens and then it looks more like magical and then i guess that's how you become more artistic and creative with your code because you're not just thinking basic math, you're thinking, okay, how is the user going to interact with this? What other way could could they interact with this? Like what, what fun different things could happen through the interaction process? That That is creative and artistic. I think that's the only, the only advice I can give you really. Um, being a coder does not make you any less creative than anyone else on the team. If anything, I think it might even give you more creativity because you are the one with the control at the end. You know, they could have all these visions and ideas, but if they can't code it and make it, make it happen in the real world, then it's never gonna happen. So it's up to you to, to be creative in that way. I hope that makes sense. I'm just gonna ramble in. Lezard Valis, and your handle is Valid Leather. Le no. I'm, I'm just gonna give up on <laughs> so bad at saying the names. You said, what are the most frustrating parts about the game making process? Mmm, frustrating. Honestly, for me, actually, it's um, being judged by the rest of the, of the class. And that might just be a me thing, but I, I fall in love deeply and solely with my ideas. I'm a very passionate person, have you noticed? 
And being the game designer, I'm the one who comes up with the initial uh, idea, the narrative, uh, the reason behind, you know, all that kind of stuff that people will ask a lot of questions about and maybe judge and some will think it's great and others won't. And, you know, it's, it's kind of intimidating to explain that to a lot of people, get maybe a lot of negative feedback and trying to explain your idea without having a prototype in the very beginning stages can be really difficult. That's why I kind of just like to forget about that. You know, obviously do the presentations and do what I've got to do, do the pitch. Um, but then don't take anything too seriously until I get to the prototype stage and I've got something physical for them to play with and see. That's when they'll get your idea more. Because once it's an idea, it's in your head, you, you can't really get it out until you just get it out. You know what I mean? You can try. You can't make kids be quiet, they're too cute. <clears throat> okay, Edward Westmoreland Cornza has a really good question about YouTube as well, saying, I know sometimes you struggle with balancing YouTube and university. Um, what would you say about someone who wants to go down this path? Has it helped you? Has it hindered? Um, it's, been, it's been a weird ride. Basically, actually, one of my lecturers left university. It was my coding lecturer. We were without a coding lecturer for like two months. It was difficult, but he left and he took me off to one side and he said, you have the potential to be like one of the best students in the class. However, I feel like your YouTube and everything you do outside of uni is holding you back. Um, and that really made me think for a while. But the more that I think about it, the more that I realize that um, this YouTube stuff, me working here, me getting out there and interviewing game developers, me meeting people through YouTube and getting opportunities offered to me because of YouTube, I'm constantly getting better because I'm making videos. It means so much more than just a grade on a piece of paper. I'm not saying I'm not striving for a first, it would be amazing if I could get that, but if I could have say a 2-1 or a 2-2, which is basically, I don't know, a good, good medium, a good medium uh, grade, as along with um, a bigger presence in the gaming community and game developers and videos to show for it and interviews with people showing that I, I understand what I'm talking about, I'm interested in it, I'm, I'm already putting my toes in the field that I want to be in, I think that makes more sense to me. I don't know, because, you know, there's so many people that come out of university and they've got a great degree, but they're not quite sure how to apply themselves in that field, or they're not quite sure how to get their foot in the door, or, you know, then they've got to work on their CV and their website, and I've already got that, and this whole YouTube channel works as my CV. It just makes sense, in my mind anyway, so yes, it is so difficult to try and do both of this at the same time, but I know that after university, it's going to be worth it, so worth it. I do kind of wish I could just dedicate myself to one thing because then I could know that I could perfect myself on that thing but I think spreading myself out a bit thin on both things will help me out better in the long run. I hope you're enjoying the giggles in the background. Have you learnt any exciting concepts or mechanics that you're going to use in games in the future? Well, I will let you in on a little something, Miles. With your handle, Merizu Music. I am actually making a game now incorporating Facebook. Yes, Facebook. And it will be pulling in your personal information, so like your profile picture and your friend's name and your gender and it puts it in the game, not just as a leaderboard, like you're walking around a 3D world and your picture's there or your friend's name is there. Imagine PT, I mean, no, 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 don't, 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 but this is where I got the idea from. I was like, imagine if you could play PT, a game as horrifying as PT, the only thing that would make it more scary is if you realise that on the table there was a portrait of you. It would be so freaky and using the Facebook SDK seems to be working at the moment because there's an SDK for Unity. So yes, that is exciting. And the last question is from Alan Malcolm, White Eagle UK. And he asked me about my future, which is kind of scary. He asked me, what role do I think I will put myself in when I get to a studio artist producer? 
The future is a scary thing. Honestly, <sighs> I think I think game designer. I really like being game designer, but it just seems like a harder job role to actually get into. But the way to get into being a 3D modeler or a concept artist. I don't know. There just seems to be a lot more information on how to how to become those roles. But I'd love to just be something kind of hybrid. You know, maybe help them with their marketing as well as do a bit of code here and there, as well as do a bit of voice acting, as well as do this, that, that, that. I don't know. I think this is why I would much prefer to work in like a little indie studio where perhaps I could just, I could just have my hands in multiple different pockets. But yeah, right now I am enjoying the coding. So maybe that and the game designer gets to do concept and code which is great. They don't just have to be the programmer and coming up with narrative and storylines and well that's what my university has told me that a game designer does anyway. If, if you think it's something else please write it down in the comments because I need to know these things. But yeah the future is um is very open at the moment but I would love to work in a games company just just to know what it's like just to get a better idea of it all you know. It's really difficult to pigeonhole yourself isn't it? Especially when you're just so passionate about about the whole process um, but I do know that I would much prefer to do some sort of storyboarding narrative work concepting or coding over like three modeling and things like that I think I need some some kind of free range to a little bit of extent even if it's just every now and then I just get to kind of think of a new character that could possibly be in the game or a new storyline arc that could possibly happen. That would keep my flame ignited. That is all I've got time for. If you would like to hear more about the progression of my third year in university, please do check out that second channel. I've already got a video up there with um, the character artist, Tabitha, where we talk about our game so far. Um, and yeah, I'll be working on that manically after I get back from Christmas, I am sure. So I'm sure you'll hear more about that. Hope you enjoyed this, hope it was insightful, and have a lovely day or evening. Bye!